Wizards are the only caster class in D&D that get their magic exclusively through study. Unlike other casters who are born with magic or have it granted to them by a god or otherworldly being. They spend their time studying and learning how to control the arcane. And they're often the ones that end up making brand new spells. Wizards can also be really dangerous. Think about it. How many D&D games have you played in where there's some sort of evil wizard or lich as the big bad? Who either wants to take over or destroy the world for one reason or another? And I'm sure some wizards that just sit in their tower studying magic have been accused of being evil, and are probably pretty annoyed with the actual evil wizards tarnishing their name as arcane casters. And these wizards do what wizards do best. They study and created new ways to defend themselves by utilizing the weave itself, eventually being called weave hackers or weave readers. And if you want to figure out how those work, then you can stick around for episode 64 of the Game Master's Domain, where I'll be going over the whole entire weave reader subclass. And as always, this pack is available on Patreon if you want to play it for yourself. And if you like my content and want to keep seeing more of it, go ahead and hit the subscribe button right down there. I, I don't have hands to point with, but I am pointing. And while you're down there, hit the bell button and the notifications button and the tell me when the video is posted button, because honestly, I have no idea how that works anymore. But enough of me rambling, let's actually take a look at what we're working with. <laughs> I thought this was supposed to be the most advanced security system on the planet. Don't double day. Hurry up. Enough. Do you have satellite? <sighs> of course. So this is going to sound strange, but there was a detail that caught my attention while I was watching an entirely unrelated anime, Kobayashi's Dragon Maid. One of the characters mentioned the similarity between glyphs and patterns they see when mages and other people cast spells, and the lines of code in their work. And well, as it turns out, in that world, mages were the first people to make what is considered modern coding language. So technically, computer coding is almost like magic. I mean, from the way I'm looking at it, this this is all magic. I'd understand none of this. You could tell me these lines of code are doing just about anything, and I'd believe you. So my thought was, why not take this in the opposite direction? and have a wizard that can see the actual code of the weave and interact with spells mid-cast, and use that to hack other casters' spells. And with that, boom! The Weave Reader was born. Quick aside, if you're like me, you might have had no idea what the weave was for a long time. It's mentioned in the flavor text of the wizard, and then much further down in the player's handbook. So when I started DMing, I didn't use the weave. Nowadays, I still use it in my games, but I don't have it as the sole source of magic in the world. It's still there and utilized, but people generally have their own internal magic system rather than pulling it from the weave. But in more standard D&D worlds, spells are just you affecting the weave and making it show certain properties, like blowing that guy up, or opening a portal to the fire plane, stuff like that. And while pretty much everyone can see the effects that changing the weave creates, seeing the actual weave itself is something different, and gives you an entirely new viewpoint on how spells work. This viewpoint, and the new info that comes with it, lets you do a lot of things that other wizards just can't, like stealing spells with your arcane hacker feature. Which lets you cast pretty much any spell in the game. As long as there is another caster nearby with magic, so sorcerers, warlocks, clerics, doesn't matter. If they have spells, you can steal those spells. And as a little bonus, you don't even have to use your own spell slots. As long as you can beat their spell save DC with your arcana check, you get to cast their spell using their spell slots. And for some reason, if you decided not to take arcana with your wizard, this feature also lets you be proficient in arcana. And before you ask, no. You cannot go up to the big bad evil wizard and steal his meteor swarm unless you can already cast a 9th level spell. Not happening. Thankfully though, you get to do more than just steal spells. 
Since you can see the weave more clearly, you can easily see what kind of spells other casters are casting, and are able to interfere with certain spells that might deal damage to your party. This is your Spellbreaker, which originally was going to be like a mini counterspell, but I had to scrap it since that would have ended up being way too strong. Instead, I came up with this. Imagine your party has had a rough fight. You're finally near the end when the big evil wizard throws down his meteors right at your party. Thankfully, you have your Spellbreaker. Now, even though Meteor Swarm is a massively damaging spell, you can cut that damage almost in half, as long as you're willing to give up your highest level spell slot. Since the way Spellbreaker works is you give up a spell slot, and depending on the level of that spell slot, it reduces the damage of the spell by 2d6, or 2d8 once you hit level 10. So if you really needed, you could give up a 9th level spell slot and reduce the damage by 18d8, which is almost half the total damage of Meteor Swarm. Sometimes you can think of this like a barrier, or it could just be that you're weakening the spell's connection to the weave, and by doing so, you're weakening its effect. So far, these abilities have been very... reactive. Protection through messing with the weave and other spells... But hacking is more than just making sure that others can't get your info and stuff. You know, this would be like the perfect episode for a VPN sponsorship. Any takers? No? Thought so. Oh well, maybe another time. But no, hacking, or in this case, weave hacking, is more about getting in and messing with your target's defenses. Which is exactly what your next feature, Glitched Weave, does. And just like a computer without an antivirus, once your glitched weave is put on someone, they get a lot weaker, and are much more vulnerable to outside attacks. So say you're fighting a big monster that maybe has resistance to slashing damage, so your fighter isn't doing as well as they'd like. You go ahead and put this on them, and as long as they fail their saving throw, your fighter can hack and slash away to their heart's content, throw their action surge and everything else in, because suddenly that monster is no longer resistant, but vulnerable. But the weave is pretty quick to recover, so this effect only lasts for around one turn. If glitched weave is like taking down a firewall, then this next feature is the next step up from that. Uploading your own virus. This is your weave worm, your very own virus that you can sick onto a caster and mess with the weave around them whenever they try to cast any spell that isn't a cantrip. Again, they make a saving throw against your spell save DC, and if they fail, that virus sticks around for a few turns, and any time they cast a spell of first level or higher, it goes wild. Not the same wild magic table as the sorcerer, but this has its own D12 glitch table with effects ranging from nothing to random teleportation, or just having the spell target themselves. This kind of takes them out of the fight for a few turns, at least when it comes to more impactful spells, since they can still cast cantrips. That is unless they want to take the risk and maybe, you know, be shrunk down to the size of a gnome. And that only leaves one feature. System Override It's one thing for a hacker to mess with your magic, another for them to put a magical virus on you, but it is something else entirely for a hacker to completely take over your spells. And that is your last card to play. When you're up against the Dark Wizard or the Lich, and they begin to cast Meteor Swarm or Finger of Death, any big game-changing spell, you can try and take over that spell. And a lot like a beefed up counterspell, you spend a spell slot of the same level as the spell you're trying to take, and you make an arcana check, with a DC of 10 plus the spell's level. And if you manage to beat that check, which shouldn't be too hard for you, you can just take over that spell. You get to choose the target location or the targets of the spell, and the spell is also still cast from the original target space, so that could give you some extra range. The spell also keeps any additional effects, and it counts as you holding concentration on it if it is a concentration spell. 
Just make sure to pick your battles properly, since you only get to do this one time per day once you succeed. Since if you do fail the check, you get to keep using this ability until you succeed. Just, you know, only once per turn. Just imagine the big bad lich at the end of the game who's on their last legs, but they know if they can kill one member of the party they can turn the fight in their favor, so they go to cast Power Word Kill or Finger of Death on you, and you just... Ha! You activated my trap card. Magical cylinders. Get wrecked. And they just turn to dust from their own spell? Overall, I think this is a really solid support wizard subclass. It's obviously not going to be dealing the most damage, because there are other subclasses that do that that are meant for that, like the Evocation Wizard, or my Laser Wizard. But it still does its job, and that job is messing with other casters, and making life really difficult for them. Uh, this is normally where I would put some uh, theme-appropriate spells, but I don't think this wizard needs any. They already get the entire wizard spell list, and on top of that, they get your spells. They get the lich's spells. They get everyone's spells. So yeah, no extra ones for them. Totally not me forgetting to make any until I wrote the script and being too tired to actually do them at that point. Totally. So I hope you guys enjoyed that one, and I also want to know if you guys are liking these new videos with the new program. I'm still learning some stuff, but I like it so far. I can make the text look a lot better than in previous videos, I think, and it's also a little bit easier to edit than shotcuts. But you know, things are still a little bit weird transitioning from editing on that for a little bit over a year to just suddenly switching. Oh, and watch out for next week's video, where I have another homebrew review from someone on my Discord server. And if you maybe want to have one of your own homebrews show up in one of these videos, Come and join us, the link is down below, where again, you can't see me pointing to. I also ping when new videos come out, so you won't have to fully rely on YouTube telling you that I have new videos. But that will about do it for our session today. I will see you all next time, and as always, have a wonderful day.